Yeah, good things are not happening in Curl Town today, but you know, we're gonna work with it. Hey, it's Mike here, and today the results are in from the vegan carnivore diet swap. Two dudes decided to change their diets and get their blood tests done before and after. One of them went from a vegan diet to a highly carnivorous diet, and one of them went from a highly carnivorous diet to a vegan diet. Yeah, there were some limitations. It only lasted 30 days, and it was really an N of two situation. There were two subjects, really only two two N of one situations because they each did a different thing technically. Credit where credit's due, this diet swap was organized and recorded by high meat dieter Drew Morg. I think to prove that vegan diets are bad, I don't know. Does he? We'll see. In terms of the numbers, we see some subtle changes in a lot of things that are probably just natural fluctuations, but there are certain biomarkers that are pretty dramatic in the way they shift and they're really hallmarks of going on a vegan diet. And I will highlight the studies that demonstrate that that is the main trend. So the most important dramatic changes that you'll see are demonstrated in the peer review literature. All right, let's do it. And one important quick point, a vegan diet and a vegan lifestyle and vegan beliefs being a vegan are different things. In this case, we're talking about a vegan diet. We're talking about plant-based diet really. So I'm just gonna probably call it a vegan diet to keep it simple. It's also discrepancies on the other side in that the guy who was carnivore was 90% carnivore. And the guy who went from a vegan diet to eating more meat went to a low carb, high meat diet, not necessarily carnivore. So I'm just gonna refer to that as the high meat group. So we have the vegan diet group and the high meat group. And by group, I mean one person. All right, let's just get right into those numbers. One that is really important and we saw a massive shift in was total cholesterol. Again, this was after 30 days, the guy that went from a vegan diet to high meat diet went from a total cholesterol of 128 to 208. The guy who went from the high meat diet to the vegan diet went from a whopping 222 down to 149. Not only did they mirror each other in an astounding fashion, but this also mirrors the studies on vegans and meat eaters. I mean, just look at this chart of an amalgamation of Western vegans and people that eat meat. The levels are very similar. In other words, it's clear that vegans naturally tend to achieve that optimal level of cholesterol. There's probably someone out there who's going, oh, you know, it's probably just a nice rise in good cholesterol, that HDL probably really means nothing. Well, the reality is, nope. Actually, it was a lot of LDL from the guy who went from a vegan diet to the high meat diet, started at 47 and exploded up to 119, that's over double. Not looking good, mirrored by the high meat to vegan guy who went from LDL of 156 down to just 82 in just 30 days, that's incredible. From this very relevant study that looked at men with a relatively low risk of heart disease, men mostly under 45, which both of the men in this study were, well, it looked at the LDL levels and cardiovascular disease death risk, and at where the high meat guy started, he was at about a 30% increased risk of death, but he was just four LDL points away from being at a 90% increased risk of heart disease mortality. So he's doing way better now. And unlike a lot of metrics that we'll see, these are definitely not just natural random fluctuations. Like you don't just have a random 74 point drop in LDL cholesterol, it doesn't happen. And of course the original video was on a, a pro meat channel. They had a cholesterol denier guy there who was trying to make the case that much higher LDL actually increases longevity. These are everybody who lived to 100 and were still alive at last check in 2015, which is the last piece that they had the data, and all of them have high LDL cholesterol, 130 to 229. A Feldman guy looked at five centenarians who had high cholesterol, therefore proving that if you up your cholesterol, you have a better chance of living to 100. First, remember the study I just mentioned, not a good strategy for people under 45, no matter what. And second of all, this is a population statistics issue. When you have a population where everybody's cholesterol levels are too high, statistically, some people, some lucky ass people will make it through and become centenarians. It's like if you had thousands of people running through a field where arrows were raining down. Yeah, a few people will make it through. That doesn't mean that showering yourself in arrows every morning is gonna be healthy. All right, I got my shampoo ready to shower. I'm just gonna turn on the arrows real quick. And there are obviously other factors. I mean, my grandpa happened to make it to 100. 
Although he had heart disease, he had a triple bypass surgery and that's how he did it. Anyway, you can take all my word for this stuff or we can actually look at some studies. Here is a real study on centenarians in Japan, 45 of them, and they found that yes, in fact, they had lower levels of total NLDL cholesterol than healthy younger people. Now it's a Japanese study, kind of hard to tell, but it appears that their LDL cholesterol averaged under 100. And to totally dwarf his five centenarians, here is a Portuguese study of 250 centenarians once again finding that they had lower levels of total and LDL cholesterol, and once again, averaged under 100 LDL. Side note, they also found an association between lower red meat consumption and centenarians, but in the end, to try and pump up your LDL levels to live longer is actually insane. All right, now let's move on to HDL or that good cholesterol. And from the dude who went from a vegan diet to a high meat diet, we can see a slight rise in HDL, which is to be expected with a raising of total cholesterol, but even the biggest HDL dreamer is not gonna offset that LDL damage with that small increase, no way. And some low carb people try to attack vegans for having lower HDL, even though they have lower all the other bad stuff. Well, the actual situation is that the dude that went from the high meat diet to the vegan diet actually had a you know relatively significant rise in HDL. He went from 47, to 55, which I don't consider out of the realm of natural fluctuations, but it's still, you know, notable. I personally don't put a lot of stock in HDL because studies giving people HDL raising medication, their HDL goes way up, but their heart disease rates don't lower. It also appears that people with genetically higher HDL don't have lower risk, so it's probably just an association anyway. All right, now let's move on to triglycerides. You obviously want these low. They were all within the normal range, but lower, you know, you can argue can have some added benefits. Well, the dude who who went from the vegan diet to the high meat diet saw a slight, you know, few point drop there. You know, and that could have just been natural fluctuation, but the dude that went from high meat to a vegan diet saw a pretty significant drop of 94 to 60, which I consider pretty notable. And when I spoke to uh, meat proponent Chris Kruger the other day on Drew's show, he was really stressing that triglyceride to HDL ratio. Well, this dude just improved his by a factor of two. On the diet that Chris told me I should quit. Anyway, moving on. Now we have the slightly more obscure VLDL, which is still a bad cholesterol. However, this is more of a triglyceride thing because it's 70% triglycerides by weight. And so it makes sense that there wasn't much change on the dude who went from plant-based to high meat, but on the dude that went high meat to plant-based, we saw a pretty significant drop, about seven points. Still that main LDL marker, in my opinion, is way more compelling. And there are a lot of other little things like calcium that didn't really change very much or just were within that natural fluctuation, which we don't really need to look at. So let's keep on looking at some other interesting stuff. Okay, now let's look at C-reactive protein, which is really important marker of inflammation in the body. The dude who went from a vegan diet to meat, oh my gosh, it actually, it lowered a little bit. Does that mean that a high meat diet is actually healthier? No, first of all, we have to look at that range of zero to three. It turns out he had really low levels of inflammation and stayed down at really low levels of inflammation possibly just natural fluctuations. And to really cement this case, we have to look at the opposite. You know, the dude who went from his high meat diet to the vegan diet went from a five down to a one. So he lowered it by a factor of five. So by looking at this chart, you can, you can kind of tell which one is more meaningful. And with that lowering of inflammation going on the vegan diet, this guy, you know, roughly lowered his risk of mortality by a factor of two. I say roughly because this study's cutoffs were below one for the low group and above three for the high group. But this guy started out at five and went down to about one. And so, so yeah, he was 0.1 one away from technically getting into that cutoff there. But to me, it's still very compelling. You know, a week later, he could very easily be under one. But I will say back to the dude that went from a vegan diet to the meat diet, you know, sometimes these diseases that create inflammation or issues that create inflammation take a while to develop. I'm not gonna say, oh, Obviously, he's guaranteed gonna get a rise of inflammation going on his meat diet, but looking at the research, you know, people who are put on a vegan diet have about a 30% lowering of C-reactive protein, so that is the trend. Going vegan equals lower. All right, now let's move on to one of my favorite topics, which is IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one. And you've probably heard me say that it fuels every stage of cancer growth and you do not wanna have higher levels. We also know that animal protein raises IGF-1, whether it's dairy or meat. And so when we saw the guy go from a vegan diet to a high meat diet, it was no surprise that he saw about a 25% rise in his levels and from the opposite switch, the meat to vegan diet 
we saw a about 25% lowering. So again, that mirrored situation of going to a lower cancer risk state. And again, to back it up with research, vegans not only have lower levels of IGF-1, but they also have lower levels of cancer risk. Okay. All right, now let's move on to homocysteine, which is a little bit more of a complicated topic that I haven't talked about very much. It can go high for a few reasons. One is, you know, not enough folate, not enough B6, but also not enough B12. However, in this case, their fluctuations just weren't high enough before and after for me to say that it was because of the diet. So let's just move right into B12, which they measured. They're all within the normal range. However, there was a drop by about a third in the dude who went on to the vegan diet. I wonder if he was taking supplements or eating fortified foods. Now the dude who went from vegan diet to meat saw a rise, but I'm like still higher than he is there. So it's not like you can't get higher on a vegan diet. And it's worth mentioning for those who are concerned from this recent study on Swiss of vegans and people that ate meat, the vegans did not have statistically significant higher levels of B12 deficiency. All of the levels were low, as they say, likely due to fortified foods and supplementation. Next up, there's folate. Vegans have way lower levels of folate deficiency and they just eat more folate. And so from the vegan going on the meat-based diet, his folate drops a little bit, not really noteworthy. Maybe he had a reserve or whatever, but the dude that went on the vegan diet, his doubled, which is pretty amazing. So between the research and this case study, it just once again highlights that vegans are at way lower risk of getting that folate deficiency, which can cause some of the most common birth defects that we see in the West. Let's just say we're lucky that this guy didn't get pregnant on his high meat diet. He would have just birthed a steak. Now for vitamin D, and my take on these levels is that they were just all too low across the board. We saw a rise in the dude that went on the meat diet, but you know, it's not like he was getting more vitamin D from the meat. It's that we were going into summer and he probably got more sun, but clearly this doesn't highlight any vitamin D dietary weakness. It's just not looking good across the board for this, these particular people. All right, moving on. All right, now, even though vitamin D is technically a hormone, let's move on to some other hormones. There's also the hormone cortisol, which you might know as the stress hormone. You still wanna have some because having too low levels is still too low but there's nothing to glean here in my opinion because both people lowered significantly on their cortisol by switching to different diets. The guy who went from a meat-based diet to a vegan diet went just a little bit outside of the normal range and who knows why that's the case. It might have to do with how he reported feeling tired. They both reported feeling tired. He just reported feeling more tired on his diet switch. It is worth noting that, for example, salivary cortisol can fluctuate by a factor of two within a day. So who knows how meaningful this really is. I don't know what was being tested. It doesn't say, but anyway. Either way, I hope this guy isn't like, oh, my cortisol levels went just outside of the normal range. I'm gonna give up all my LDL cholesterol inflammation and IGF-1 benefits. That would be completely insane. All right, now for testosterone, every man's favorite hormone. We have uh, not really anything super notable here. There's just that natural fluctuation that humans have in men under 45. And it's worth noting, the dude who went vegan was 43. The guy who went high meat was 29. In men under 45, just between the morning and later, we can see a fluctuation of 150 to 200 nanograms, which means all of this is like, whatever, who knows? It's all within the normal range. And once again, if you're concerned from this study, vegans not only have equivalent levels of free testosterone, which is usable testosterone, but actually higher levels of total testosterone. So I wouldn't be afraid to go vegan because of this. All right, next up we have bun, which is where they measured their buns. They just squeezed their butts like this. And the results are, no, this is actually blood urea nitrogen. So urea is a waste product and your kidneys clear it out of your blood. So higher levels means your kidneys aren't working as well and clearing it out as well. So the guy who went from high meat to vegan, he started out on the higher end and went down to a very comfortable place. But the dude who went from vegan to the high meat diet, he actually blasted right out of the normal range, which indicates some compromised kidney function. You know, some high meat people might be like, oh, it's just because he's eating more protein, not outside of the normal range, bro. It's just not good for your kidneys. If you're a betting person, whose kidneys are you gonna bet on failing more? Come on, be honest. And I need to do a full video on kidneys and animal protein and so forth, ideally with a doctor. So stay tuned for that at some point. But in the end, clearly the guy who went on the high meat diet, his, his kidneys are being burdened by excess animal protein. And that's about it for any of the notable areas. There's some other little things that are just aren't worth talking about. But zooming out in the end, it's clear that if it were a contest, a vegan diet would have won here. And it's also worth mentioning that from the original video, they recounted what one of the doctors said after seeing the results. And then I know a lot of the plant-based people are gonna love this, but I 
wanted to include the quote, as a low carb person, I'm more convinced by these labs that carnivore is not a good idea. <laughs> so overall, it's clear that the vegan diet was providing a better health state with lower disease and death risk for both people when they were on that diet. In terms of the cholesterol, the LDL numbers, it's a no brainer that was better in terms of the inflammation going down for the dude who was on the meat diet originally, absolutely a no brainer. It's definitely a way better health state for him. And then in terms of the IGF-1 lower cancer risk for both of the people when they were on the vegan diet, obvious choice. And even though this was just two people, it's important to get results like this, especially when there aren't really any studies on these really high meat diets other than, you know, how they might just be another low carb diet that causes, you know, 30% increased risk of all cause mortality. But because these diets cause so much animal death, animal harm and environmental impact, it's really important to nail home that no, you actually won't be healthier on this diet. And so there's really no excuse to do that extra harm. It's really just more death all around. Okay, let me know down below what you thought about all these numbers, feel free to like, subscribe, notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.